What's going on, guys? So today on this Shoki review, we're going to be taking a look at something from the HD Build Divers Re-Rise line. It is the Gundam Aegis Knight, Cosme's mobile suit. Now, fun fact, there was an unboxing for this, and then it got deleted. <laughs> so I accidentally deleted the unboxing. I even have the, the picture, which was the box, so that I could show it's an unboxing. And uh, then I deleted it because I'm a dummy. So that sucks, but it is what it is. And also, I don't know, it sounds like somebody's moving some stuff. So if you guys hear a bunch of noise, I apologize. Hopefully the new microphone uh, that's aimed pretty much at my face uh, shouldn't pick up any extra noise. Also, uh, Aegis Knight. So there you have him in all kinds of the weird shapes and sizes he's got. So his normal uh, bot mode is his weird claw attack mode thing i know it has an actual name i don't care uh it doesn't show his core fighter mode or anything like that on the cover here but then it also didn't really see that in the series so this was of course cosme's second go at a mobile suit not counting the just unite we're not counting it i'm not counting it so anyways you got bandai spirits 2020 down here explosions and things i'm sure that's a one eye that was destroyed there scan to watch the anime i've already watched the anime by the way guys if you are watching these series and you're new to the channel make sure you go check out the playlist where rodimus 13 and i went over all of the episodes of gundam build divers re rise it's very fun anyways so let's look at this we've got actions we got the right shot lancer kai Cool. Sliding gimmicks and side armor alone for dynamic poses with legs spread out. I have no... I, what? All right. Uh, Aegis Shield. Cool. We're going real hard on the names there. We got the Charon, Charonus Hyper Beam Sword. A very large form by combining all the equipment and various parts. Various clear effect parts can be used and the weapon transforms are included. Yeah. Leviathan Beam Saver. It's Leviathan. Uh, high speed cruising mode, something we never really saw him do. Uh, also comes with a runnerless pedestal. Everybody hates those stands, but hey, we got another one. I think. I think virtually every one of the divers' kits came with it. Did the core gun? No, the core gun them did not. So that's interesting. Uh, it can be transformed to rearranging parts. High speed cruising mode and assault combat mode. And then there's Kinga mode. And then core fighter. So there's even a core fighter. So what the hell? All right. And then you got that. Nope, 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 nope. Don't look at that. That That's for another day. Okay. You got number 33 in the line. I did not build everything from the re-rise line. But at this point, I've rebuilt all of the, or I've built all of the second season uh, Gunpla. So that's cool. And then you got Vandai Hubby Dodner. And yeah, I just didn't feel like buying all the things. Okay, and then you've got obligatory rear end front shot end, which is something I haven't pointed out in a long time. It's not in the same pose. Because here, the Lancer thingy is pointed up. Here, the Lancer thingy is pointed down. So there's that. Gundam Aegis Nata. Gundam Aegis Knight was built with the concept of having wide range defensive capabilities, becoming a shield that protects the build divers. It not only has a shield with larger defensive range, also has improvements in the mobility, which allows it to quickly head to its allies and protect them offensively. All the things. All right, so we got warnings there. Hey, don't. Uh, actually, I guess you could probably let Cosme near your three year old. He's pretty good with little furry kids. It's actually not too bad. And then you got a little guy with a the toilet there, poly bag. Uh, there's only polystyrene in here, so that's pretty cool. No poly caps, which. What? No. There are probably caps, aren't there? What are there called caps? I don't even remember anymore. This is what happens when you delete, delete things. Perhaps it's a polycapless kit. I did do a lot of those back to back. Interesting. And of course, no yen cuff. But I picked this up at Bedrock City here in the great city of Houston, and it was twenty five ninety nine, which was probably more than it should have been, if I'm honest, and more than likely in the twenty twenty to twenty four dollar range. Don't overpay for this. Seriously, don't. But either way, we got a new Cosme Mobile suit, and it's still upside down. Yay. All right. This is going to be a hefty review, a lot of transformations, a lot of accessories. So let's get to it.
All right, guys, you know what time it is. It's turntable time. I don't even know if this thing has power. We'll find out. Hey, there it goes. All right, so after doing May's Wood on Pod, I picked this one up, and I did build this right after doing the Barbatos parts. Um, and I did do this while we kind of had no power. Because it's like, I need to get some builds done. You know, we just basically had some daylight. And then when the power came back on, that was one thing. If you watched my video where we needed to get back to work and where I've gone or where I've been, you know, I told you the whole story about what's happened around here. So, but this is one of several kits that I worked on while the uh, power was out or we had snow because I was at home for a few extra days than, well, anybody anticipated. So, but as it goes, it's an okay build. Um, there's some things I'm very much not a fan of and it will come up on multiple occasions and it will be very frustrating throughout the thing he does have uh, fairly few stickers just a couple of small detail stickers and uh, reflective ones here and there but nothing too crazy does come with a buttload of translucent effect parts that we will look at obviously when we need to and of course all the transformations and things like that will all happen the biggest thing that i that i had as a criticism of this kit before seeing it in hand and uh, you know real things was thinking that anything that was this neon green would be a sticker and i was shocked to see they gave you real plastic however that is actually metallic plastic so it's very reflective um and also could stress over time i can already see stress marks just from putting it together so that's the thing that can happen also the gold plastic so be wary in the future you may have some gps swirly plastic syndrome on certain things but other than that you know it's not that bad of a build but it's also not that good of a build so let's look at it up close and see why so first up we gotta kind of come down he's a short little guy all right so up close um he's an aegis more or less and one thing that's interesting, uh, some people pointed out that he kind of took the age part of Aegis, though not spelled that way, uh, a little bit. So there's some almost Gundam Age 2 aspects in this, uh, just with the way he kind of did the chest. Um, I'm not aware of the actual Aegis that much from Seed. I've never built one, so this would be the first version of one I've ever built. Um and yeah, the parts that mostly annoy me are here in the shoulders. Those are going to fall off. They will fall off. Especially that one. The right side one definitely will fall off. Mark my words. Uh, the uh, transformation to king mode uh, does involve one really dumb part that I don't like that much. It's it's about as good as it could pull off, but I think it's just stupid. Um, and some of the other things, it's it's not terrible. But it's not good. It's just like they could have engineered it better. But I think they just needed to put too many eggs in this one design basket, as it were. But right here we do have multiple black stickers going down the front here. Just for vents and stuff. Things I would normally paint, so thank God for stickers. Um, though if I were to paint it, I would definitely make sure I paint inside that slot in the chest. Uh, which, of course, will have something plugged in it at another time. But it is what it is. Looking at the head, he does have the crazy looking crest and the super high thing that I guess uh, Asran would have on a lot of his mobile suits from Seed. Especially the later ones <laughs> from, from Seed Destiny. Definitely, we're all about the super high crest. I do like the reflective green. It does look pretty good. The head looks fine. Looks very Zeta inspired in a way to me. Which kind of makes sense. Um, and considering having done the wood on pod right before this, not to mention a master grade, some of the construction, just like, all right, this is interesting. It does actually have some double jointed elbows, which is really nice. Uh, the shoulders can come up. And then if you, you know, just don't need those in the way whatsoever, which you don't, you can actually get a really good high teacher. Look at this. So you got a nice swivel right inside here and then you can pull it out to a ball joint going into the shoulder armor so this is actually a really really well executed shoulder because i mean look at this you get all this rotation that's just in the shoulder and then you get all of that plus a hinge 
plus the chest itself moving. So that's very, very good articulation. Uh, I will say the head is super loose on its ball joint, and then it has a, a neck joint down there. So this is a super loose neck in and of itself. You have the bicep swivel and a standard wrist joint as it goes, and standard holding hands for the thing. And since I mentioned it, the shoulder covers, it's realistically what they are, um, plug into these holes in the backpack. And in plugging those in, it usually opens up the backpack. Like this will pull out a little bit. And then these are also on, well, the loosest ball joints you could possibly imagine. So they did a ball joint there to run inside that sliding groove. Obviously, it's meant to plug into other things, as you can see, all kinds of tabs and, st and stuff like that. So in future transformations, that will happen. But you saw that literally took almost no effort to unplug that guy. But put it back on, you kind of have to get up under here and then push that down onto there. And then you just sort of slide it back. And then this one is much looser. Look, that takes no effort. Like, there's no... There's no consideration for that at all, and it does super annoy me. And if yours does that too, please let me know. Please let me know it's that easy on yours as well. And if you like did anything to make it a little bit more permanent in that. As for torso, I don't believe it really has any torso movement. Uh, no, side to side. I can just rotate. The chest comes off real easy as I just tried to demonstrate. I don't like the way this collar applies. I think that's actually really stupid. Uh, just part of the Gundam design. I left the front skirts attached just because usually with a uh, flyer, I usually leave the, I try to leave the front skirts still attached to each other, but you could definitely cut them if you are so inclined. The hips are, well, they're basically like a universal joint up here at the top. So you get some outward swivel, you get your forward kick, you know, and then you get your back kick like that. And then something interesting, you do get alternate mode. So you can swing this up down with the shoulder. Seriously, it sounds like somebody's dragging crap down the stairs outside. I don't know if you guys can hear that. So you can swing this out, swing this out, and you can see the pegs and the holes, so to speak. And... If you get this lined up properly, which this side is fighting me. There it goes. Got it up far enough. And then this one is not going. Okay. So you can get it to a much wider stance. Dang it. It's fighting me for some reason, though. One. Come on. I can't. For some reason, it doesn't want to get both. It's like one or the other, but not both. There. Okay. So you can get it to a much wider leg stance, something like this. Now, this might be for the uh, later transformation. Or maybe it's for flight mode because I haven't done those things yet. That's right. I'm doing this completely with zero knowledge of pre of things coming out down the line. I actually have the instructions sitting right here so I can tell myself what to do. So there's that. You also have these side skirts, which are like thrusters. Very seed-like in nature. Uh, be super careful. So it has a polycap. See, I'm going to say it has polycaps. No, those aren't polycaps. They're actually hard plastic. They're not polycaps, I should say. Uh, just the fact that you want to t turn them, it can rotate, but you have a hinge here, you have a swivel there, and then a swivel here. You got to be careful that you don't just end up twisting it straight off of the hinge because it'll just break. I guarantee you people have done it. Um, and then you got the, that that just fell off. Um, this is dumb. Just going to say it. That's dumb. That's dumb. I said it was going to annoy me. Okay, so let's get into a little bit of the accessories. So you get the crappy stand. You get 
a stand adapter, which is always a good thing. Uh, and you just, I believe you just clip it on right up in here, like so. And then it can go on a stand. So that's cool. And I believe uh, same adapter in a different position. Uh, or maybe just re-engineer this. Swivel it for flight mode. So you can do multiple things with it like you do. So let's get him off of here. And look at all of his accessories. Alright, so first up, his main weapon, which has always been a lance of some type. So this is his new Lancer weapon. And, well, basically this is very much from Double uh, O. So that's something that the uh, GNX Lancers would have. And, yeah, once again, if you recall me talking about it, I can't paint anything right now until I get thinner. I have ordered thinner. Um, so that's something that's coming. Uh I don't remember where I talked about that, but it's a thing. So uh, I can finally get back to painting things once I have thinner in my house. So these little uh, gun turret thingies here should be uh, gray, or at least gunmetal to match the rest of it. It is molded in gunmetal, which is cool. And it's very much almost like that Proto, Proto Lance version that we got from the Gen X Advanced, which is pretty cool. I'm sure other things have used it at some point in the past, but I am directly attributing it to that. If you don't like it, I don't care. Okay, and he can hold it. Okay, so um, the dumb thing about this is the obvious length problem. So if you tuck it up into here, it gets a, a little awkward to hold, but you can. You can, can hold it on the trigger hand. Um, I don't think he has any spare hands. If he does, I don't. I have not looked. There's, there's several runners left over with some extra parts that I think may not be to this kit specifically. This does have some build divers specific, like this is just build diver parts. Okay, so he can hold it like a gun. He can also hold it like a lance because these are standard HG style hands. You can just dun -dun and plug that little guy right up in there. Or at least try to. There it goes. Okay. And then he does have a square section, which I absolutely love. Square section to hold and have Lancey Kill Death device. Yep, that's what it's called. Lancey Kill Death device. Uh, he does have a tab back here that I believe you can use for weapon storage. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. Okay, no real, no real proof that it actually does plug in there. But I believe it's the same type of hole that is in his forearm. And I think that is used later on in flight mode to plug that in there. So, in theory, that is the thing that could, that could happen. You also get his... Uh, uh, he calls it an Aegis shield, but I think this is the, uh, like, Dimetrodon shield from uh, from Power Rangers. Anyways, uh, yeah, so I think this uses the same base as his previous you know, Jump to Shield or whatever, or whatever he called it, because it's got the same cutout shape. Uh, so I'm just guessing. Uh, looks cool, I guess. It's a buttload of gold. I'm always scared at that notion. And... It's got mounting peg, other peg, hand thingy, and multiple holes. Those are all going to come into play at some point. But let's go ahead and put it on him. Okay. So one thing I hate about this, and it's not bad, it's just annoying, is that they could have either left one side of this open, particularly this side, so that you could just slide it in. But no, it made it a little bit difficult. So you do have to take the back of the hand off. Or take the entire hand off, which is generally easier. <sighs> Unplug it. Put on the hand. Put on the back of the hand. You could also, in turn, remove this and do the handwork there. Oops, there we go. I do like the fact there's a square piece there so you can hold it straight, which is always fun. And then you can plug the hand in 
There's also a thing about this where it feels super light. Like, there's no weight in any one part of it. So it kind of... It doesn't feel great half the time. There we go. Okay, so I'm trying to get it tabbed into his forearm. It took me a second. So you can get it tabbed into the forearm as well. And so he has this nice shield. He has this nice shoulder piece that will not stay on to save my life. All right, so there he is with the shield and whatnot. Looks pretty cool. It's a good picture. Yay. And last and certainly not least of his weapons is his Leviathan sword. Leviathan sword. And it's just a hilt. Um, I think it's just a super fancy beam saber, if we're honest. It's gold plastic crap. Don't like it. By the way, look at my scar. Look how it's healing. Looks kind of gross. Anyways, um, and it does have a very specific beam effect for this. It's this one. Come on. So he gets this cool beam sword. It's not really long. Actually, a lot of this reminds me of stuff from Power Rangers, which makes sense with the way Cosme sees the world. Um, <laughs> and a lot of the make-believe he used to go for. It's actually not terrible. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's not terrible by any means. It's not great, but, you know, it, it sort of just does the thing. Having kind of a hard time getting to... Stand. One thing I didn't really point out was the feet, because uh, we'll talk about them in the transformation. So, one thing about the sword. One, he can hold it, but it's just a round handle, so it'll spin. But if you take that off, you do store it in here, in any of these holes, realistically. The instructions mostly show it, like, here. But, I mean, if you wanted to put it in one of the other holes, there's one there, one there. You can totally do it. It really wouldn't be that big of a deal. So, I mean... As a knight-looking guy, not to be confused with knight guy, he's actually pretty cool. But because he's not just a knight, he upgrades to king mode, which is such a dumb thing because the whole whopping transformation is literally just this. His crown is up. So this thing has a little slider back here. I don't know if I can show you. A little slider. And then you flip it up and down. And yeah, I've removed most of... The, yeah, I moved a little bit of the safety nubs. Not great. Alright, but of course, in king mode, he does get his super awesome, ridiculous weapon thing. Which I have not done this combination yet, so this is going to be fun. Okay, so you want to make sure you have the shield off. The lance off. And you want to... Remove these guys, like so. They're just on these little pegs. I almost forgot this part, by the way. I'm sitting here about to go into it. I'm like, wait a minute. This is something that, damn it, polycaps would have been better for, if I'm honest. Because, as I stated, that's a little tight. And frankly, I don't want to break these little bits off, like so. Good? Good. Okay. So with the lance, you want to just pull this guy off, which is incredibly tight. That's not supposed to be that tight. What the heck? <laughs> that is That was super tight. You can see it's got some pretty nice part separation there. Okay. So grab our shield. And I believe you want to put the sword handle like this. Remove these parts. That's not easy to pull out. Okay, you want to grab these guys. Uh, it says there's a right and left version, but I don't... Oh, yeah, because you want the, uh, the holes to be on the inside, so you don't want that to show. Okay, so you want to plug these onto here. Because the, the holes are there for the effect parts. So you're basically going to do this number. And then with the handle handle, you got this plug here. That will plug into there, I believe. Okay, so from here, which is just the weapon mode, and I don't, you just sort of make this go away, just throw it away. 
uh, you want to use all of the freaking effect parts, which is crazy. So you want the you want these two guys to go into these parts. And some of these really look like uh, Hasbro and Bandai did some work together. If you're familiar with the bluish parts. You want one of these flame thingies. All of these things have doubled up parts. And then you've got two shorter uh, beam blasty effect parts here. That you want to use with these. Like so. There's some other parts too that I'm unaware. Oh. This part works with this guy. Okay. So now we need to apply this to here. And so with the flame effect part, you're gonna I think it's plugging in right there. It's the only spot you know broad enough for that to plug in. Let's push these out just a little. And then we want the taller guys to plug in here. Fan out just a little. Same thing over here. By the way, none of these are right or left side specific. They're exactly the same on both. And then you want these shorties to plug in the top hole over here. To the best of your ability, like so. And mind you, those aren't very deep, so. There's his, like, big, ridiculous energy sword thing that he did that he clearly copied from Captain Zeon. <laughs> it's like, let's just be honest here. And is he holding it in his right hand? I believe so. <clears throat> Oh, it looks like it's a two-handed operation. That's what we're looking at here. So the right arm... Uh, go ahead and pull the hand off to make life easy. It's a good recommendation there. And it looks like the right hand is choked up on here. Come on. You know, I was just thinking about it. It would be kind of cool if these actually had a hinge to them. Like, they could hinge open. You know, if the fingers can't open, have the back hinge. You know? It feels like that would make sense. Okay. And since we have that attached, let's just go ahead and plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it in. Which is hard to do. <laughs> There's nothing to push on. Hold on. I'm going to... Well, I ripped the whole thing apart. That was not my goal. Make, yeah. So this is why I do these things sometimes, so you guys can see how stuff can just fall the hell apart. You know. Come on. Okay, so let's try that again. I'm going to put this in here. Okay. And then it has the left arm just grabbing a little bit lower down. Which, sure. <laughs> sure, that can happen. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that can happen. Do I have enough? Is there enough flexibility to pull that off? I mean, I don't really trust it. Oh, yeah, I guess I can. All right, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pull the hand off. I'm just gonna do the back of the hand, and then try to get it in place to the best of my ability. Turn. So the awkward thing is that gun handle is just hanging out there. See, like how the hell? I guess like that. Okay, so I'm not gonna bother trying to get the back of the hand in place. I'm just going to go with it like this. 
I am King, I am King Titan. There we go. So now he's in king mode with his gigantic sword dealie and no shoulders because they won't stay on to save anyone's life. Let alone Jed's. They definitely don't stay on to save Jed's life. Yeah, I went there. What of it? Okay. Something. Yes, no, sturdy. Okay, you can actually hold it and stand. That's impressive. Oh, jeez. So this is all just the weapons crap. We haven't even got the transformations yet. Oh, God. And by the way, there's still other effect parts. You get these dumb uh, lightning beam effects. Uh, I hate those. And then you also have these, which I don't know if we're going to use those or not. Once again, haven't gotten that far in the instructions. So let's undo all this and get into transformation. All right, guys, so before I get too far and into transformation and stuff, I wanted to bring in the Wodum pod for size comparison. And you can see that it, it's always big. One thing about Cosme's suits, maybe it's just the fact they always went with seed suits. They were never huge, you know? And then I will bring in, of course, all of the suits for a different video. There you go. The Wodum pod towers, except for the energy effect parts. Okay, uh, I guess let's go do transformations. Oop. Just get that slightly off screen. Okay, so let's uh, let's do what we can here. Um, so this is going into high speed cruising mode. So if shoulders come off. Super easy. Okay, let's shrink the arms in. And I guess the chest plate comes off. Oh, yeah, it does. Uh, it's got a little bleh chest in there. Honestly, uh, I forgot that could come off. What even holds that on? Just friction fit? Yeah, it's just a friction fit. That's stupid. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We want to whoa, knock the camera over and turn the head around. Yeah, these are technically supposed to be facing back. <clears throat> oh, my hoodie is... My new hoodie is attacking the camera. That's what's going on. Okay, turn the hands around. Okay, I couldn't tell. I'm looking at the instructions. Like, what is rotating? I can see the rotation marks. I'm, and I've gotten fairly used to really crappy transform, transformer instructions. So, Gundam transformer instructions should be better. Okay, then we want to flip these. These guys come straight down, as far as you can go. Like so. By the way, when I was trying to undo everything, I was having a heck of a time with this back plate kept coming unplugged. Okay, so we've got the faux cockpit, which is very double O, in my opinion. Um, I'm sure there's other ones that do it. I don't care who I'm talking about double O. Okay, arms out to the side. Looks like we want to rotate the waist 180 degrees. Like so. Like I said, it's like I could have skipped articulation because transformations are going to show us everything it can do. Okay, and then... Which way is it? These... Oh, that's kind of cool. Those come out like wings. That's neat. Okay. I can kind of straighten out the legs a little. There we go. Okay. Oh, uh, this is another thing... <sighs> I wasn't going to point out just yet, but so the heels that plug in here, you can see these things, the things they plug into split really bad. Um, I was just gluing those just flat out glue those. Okay. Where am I at now? Now I'm at put arms down, but behind wings. Okay. That's fine. I can do that. I bet, I bet that the but these guys are going to plug into the forearms or some shit. I don't know. I have no idea, honestly. Okay, well, where are we at? Uh, bring legs together as tight as you can. Mm, I wonder if the crotch adapter is slightly in the way. Okay, so remove that. Close this up. 
I'm getting a phone call, but I can't answer that right now. I'm a bit busy. Okay. I'm trying to get this mostly straight. You can see there's a whole lot of moving parts in these legs. Okay. Where am I at now? Just basically that. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So, <laughs> how is it? How does it go? Let's look like this. So, we want these guys to come up. That's where shoulder's going to go. And then you're going to do like a fake, uh, kind of how wing does its thing. So you want to give it in this, this deal. <laughs> so it's, it's not exactly a face plant flyer so that I can appreciate that, but it's definitely a, um, I don't really have a term for these. That's an interesting one. Okay. So now we're at, put these shoulders on facing backwards which i'm sure that will be absolutely stable because you know those are the best best things ever i'm gonna say this this is a really dumb flight mode okay so let's go there so you see that already flopped down so that's stupid like, how are you supposed to... Like, they have to stay about as centered as possible. So that's that. God, I can just feel how crap that is. It just, it just feels crappy. Okay, so the... Uh, this guy. Using the tab that I once spoke about. I uh, use that to plug into the forearm. There. And once again, I don't think we ever saw it do this. Or if we did, it was very briefly. Okay, and then the shield will plug in on the other side. Oh, hold on. We have to reconfigure. My bad. Hold on. So you want to remove the sword from here. I had it set up still standard shield emoto. Uh, handle comes out. The This tab goes in the middle. Yeah. Hold on. I'm trying to see. Oh, interesting. Okay, so there's a couple tabs. So you can actually... Well, you're supposed to be able to plug... Ah, look at that. That's cool. All right. So that's something I did not know about. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Okay, plug this in here. And plug this guy over here. So you can reorganize it. That's pretty neat. I like that. And then come over here and plug this guy into the forearm like before. So we got the shield on one side, the other thing on the other side. Where does the chest go, though, Martin? Do we just do nothing with the chest ever again? It just disappears, flies off into the ether? That's weird. That seriously doesn't stay up. I'm just being honest with you. Hmm. Okay, so this guy attach. Ah, I should have left it on there. Okay, so I guess I can still access it, so it is what it is. Plug that back on where it was, and then now we can plug it onto the flight stand. Sure, sure we can. In this configuration, look at it, it's so special. So special. How do you how do you even deal with how special this stupid, stupid thing is? Okay, so there's that. Uh, once again, where does the head where does where does this go? I mean, I kinda wanna just put it back on, if I'm honest. I don't even know why I technically had to remove it. So there's the high speed flight mode, which sure. Sure, that that is well hideous and stupid, and 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 most of it is. And as you can see, the instructions just off to the side here. Um, I um, I think it's really dumb. I think this is really dumb. It's fine that they tried to execute it. Sure, it, it's fine that they wanted to give it a high speed flight mode because it's one thing he wanted to do was have the capability to get in and out of the field quickly, basically copying. Um, the core Gundam 
as much as he could. That's why we even get a freaking core fighter here in a few minutes. I don't even know how long it'll take me to get to get to, get to that. Um, which seems like fairly easy. Like, I guess that's post transformation is what that is. So let's go ahead and do the um, assault combat mode, which is the kind of grabby claw mode that Aegis does. Okay, so I've got it to the beginning stages of assault combat mode, claw mode thing. Uh, so basically, I've just turned it all back around facing forward like it was. Um, I've left the head turned around and these up because that seems to be the first couple stages. And then we want to turn the arms up. By the way, I'm going to hate this. this I just know it. I already know I'm going to hate this with a passion. Okay, so this needs to go up. And then we want to turn the arms 180 and then the hands 180. Right? Or maybe 260. I don't know. It sounded right. So the arms and the legs become the claw parts in this transformed moto. So we're doing this is what's happening. He's raising the roof. And then we take uh, we take the flappy do here. That goes that way. You put these straight back. Once again, I'm really going to hate this. Okay, uh, what else? What are we looking at here? Um, turn the body around again? Or turn the... Yeah, turn turn the waist around. See if I'd noticed that, I would have not done it already. There we go. Snug that back down. Every time I do one of the major maneuvers with this, I feel like it just kind of fall apart. It just doesn't feel good in hand. I don't know something something about the non polycap construction doesn't feel great. I know that's blasphemy. Okay, uh, where are we at now? So flip these again back weird turn the whole thing around and then turn these back okay and then flap them down flat like that and then these guys turn straight down I believe that's what I'm seeing uh yeah, that's that's what it is. Okay. All right, so let's see if we get to stand for all that matters. Okay, so now the shoulder armors are going to plug in somehow. What are they attaching to? Oh, there's slots. Hold on. There's slots right here. And you use the tabs there. Interesting. Okay. Oh, now he's just super manning. All right. That's actually a very nice connection, unlike the other connections for these things. There we go. Actually, if you fold this down, this is a much more compelling flight mode. Are you kidding me? Oh, by the way, this keeps popping off after just turning it once. So that's dumb. All right. Uh, where are we at now? Okay. So put the arms in a menacing position. Like, yeah. Utilize, utilize all of your parts to do this. He's like, hi, I'm going to attack you. Uh, do we do anything with the Legos? I guess you just to point the toes because there's holes in the toes. So you point the toes like you did before. And then you just utilize the legs like you do. Like so and like how and like Dodo. Okay, so there we go. There's, there's this. <laughs> I mean... That's not as bad. So that's a thing. Let's see here. Uh, now we attach the other things. Can you put this on a stick? Yes, yes, you can. You can put it. Up, you can put it on the stick. Hold on. I should have just had one. I have two of these laying here. I should just put one in flight mode, one in not flight mode. Okay, so there we go. There, he's on a stick now. He's just on a stick. On a stick. Who knows the reference? Anyways, uh, okay. Hold on. What do I do here? This looks like... This looks like a good job for me. Everybody. No, never mind. going to be dmca to death here. Um, it's hard to tell what's going on. So it looks like you want to take... You're mixing and matching now. 
Where's the other little guy? Oh, right here. Because this is his weird, like, cutting thing that I don't know if it ever really worked. I think we are using... No, not that. Uh, these guys. So these we didn't use before. We're using now, which is interesting. Now, I do like that they put the tiny little blades inside the larger receptacles. So these plug in down here on the toesies. No. Plug in. No. Stop fighting me. There we go. So those plug in there. Go ahead and orient the blades however you need to. And then, of course, there's a couple spots here and there. And there. So, yeah, as much, as much trash as I talk, I actually dig this in comparison. Uh, too bad the other weapons and such can't really do anything. And seemingly, if you want to, you have the angled ones. You could also do it to where the blades are all facing forward and like a multi-stabby mode. I'm not going to bother with that. It's just something you can figure out on your own. So, utilizing the not quite not exactly 90 degree angle bits that you have you can use the same bleem bleem baits bleem baits as it were do that uh one thing i do not like about this is that you lose the shield and the lance so i mean you still end up with the idea that you don't get everything in one shot and that bothers me like it's just always throwing crap aside also, I'm going to take this time to try this out just to see. It's technically loose, but <laughs> it's like I was hoping. I was hoping you could store that on the butt. Okay, so he's still got a core fighter mode. So how do I, I basically uh, we're going to just explode him at this point. So let me let me just do that. Okay, I wasn't going to film this, and I changed my mind. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and remove the chest plate. You need to remove the backpack, except it is entirely too tight. It's just on a single little tab down the middle. So this is one reason I said that this is kind of crap. You can see how things just don't fit very well. So this is another piece that I would 100% glue. Like, get your cement, glue that in place. Because these just plug in here. And obviously for different modes, you're going to make use of that. This, of course, always falls off. Okay, so I don't need the arms. Don't need the legs. So it's literally going to turn into just a core Okay, where do the legs come off? <laughs> Before I just start ripping, I was like, where do the legs come off? I kind of forgot. So once again, I didn't go into the articulation for the legs because they are what they are, but they are double-jointed knees, and you get this interesting way these plug together due to, you know, later things that happen. Uh, okay, so I need this back. Plug that in. The head's going to stay facing backwards because that's what we do. That's one problem with keeping things on a stand when you're trying to manipulate it. Okay, so let's let's get this guy facing forward like he's supposed to do. I guess there's a little bit of articulation there <clears throat> with the way the torso goes together. Okay, so turn this here. Back. Back. Flatten. Okay, so basically this is where we want to be. Flip this up. Flip these down. Right? Is that what I'm saying? Down. Yep. Okay. And then turn the waist around. Damn it. <laughs> Every time it's like turn the waist around. I just turned it around, you jackass. Oh, hey, look at that. He does have a pivot in the waist. That's convenient that I... Totally missed that before. Okay, so what we've got so far is this. Actually, it looks a lot like a core fighter. I didn't even consider that. All right, and now we're going to need the shieldo again. 
We're going to reorient once again. So we want nothing, I guess. Hold on. So no, it wants the sword to be plugged in here. And we don't need the tab or the handle. I'm assuming the handle is fine tucked out of the way. We want the Lancer, as I'm calling it. I can't see what I'm looking at. Oh, fold the wings flat. Duh. Always fold always fold the wings flat. Like that is that looks remarkably like an actual normal core fighter. It's kind of funny. Okay, and then we want this guy to plug in here. Just do whatever you want with the handle. I guess that doesn't really matter. Straighten that out. Okay, and then take the shield and plug it in here. And then I still have the crotch adapter. And then once again, going back to this guy. Like, this is kind of dumb, if I'm honest. But if I remember correctly, you don't use parts of this for uh, the later thingo. So, uh, that's bad. That's real bad. But this sort of emulates what, um, in, in the original Justice Knight, he looked like he could use his sword or his lance and his shield and everything together as a like flyer mode and you know we sort of saw that in one particular instance but like this is literally like well if you have all your arms blown off and even your armor and stuff like that gun and move the instructions here you can get this crazy contraption you know and still have most of your weapons intact and i guess somehow thrusting i guess it's, you're getting most of your thrust from these guys wow that was that was zero depth perception i was looking through the camera but I guess it's interesting, you know? It's a whole lot of stuff to pack into an HG kit. Oh, jeez. But it is what it is. So I'm going to put it back together for final thoughts. Good God. All right, guys. So final thoughts wise, you know, I went into this... To be honest, I went into this review with uh, pretty like down on it. If you couldn't tell, uh, it still has its problems. The shoulders being the worst part of it. The uh, little thingy on the back, the faux cockpit thing, always popping off. Also super, super annoying. But as I've messed with it, taken it to its different modes, and even now posing it for this and, of course, the thumbnail, I enjoyed it a little bit more. I do think that it's one of those where you're going to have to glue some parts to really be happy with it. So, you know, or build them up at least like the ball joints inside the shoulder sliders. Uh, it, it's one of those things where you're probably going to have to do some stuff. There are things that remind me of the H2 uh, Gundam with the way these little bits here. This is something I could completely live without. I almost would love to see just the shoulder pads mounted to the shoulders, you know? And then there's also things that must be related to either the combined mode or even if there's even if it shares anything with the regular HG Aegis where there's plugs that, you know, they don't have anywhere for the ink to go. Stuff like that. Um, the connections for the side skirt thrusters, really kind of scary because it is just that normal C-clip and then plugged into a thing that's supposed to rotate and pivot. I feel like that's going to break one day, messing with it a little too much. Um, it does come with a buttload of accessories and effect parts, and frankly, I hate having a buttload of effect parts. Unless, of course, you're just going to use them. What's funny is it reminds me a lot of some of the 30-minute missions stuff. But, guys, we do have to do some prep work for the next video. We do have to bring in the friends for next time next time on Shoki Reviews Gundam Build Divers we will re-rise 
If you know what re-rising means. It's MGO. Anyways, so guys, uh, let me know what you think down below. If you've built this guy, uh, if you've done anything with it, has anybody done a straight Aegis repaint or even a Captain Zeon repaint? I think it'd be pretty, be pretty cool. Uh, if I could still get the Zeonic new Gundam, I might. I don't know. It's, it's an interesting one, but I don't know if I need it. It's still, it's kind of cool to have Cap. It would be kind of cool to have Captain Zeon's thing. Uh, also it would be kind of cool to get a like statue slash figure of Captain Zeon with, uh, with a Kazumi to go with it. I think it'd be kind of cool. I don't feel like I need Justice Knight. I think I'm fine with having the season two situation here. I've been a fan mostly of these, you know, I did like the Valkylander, both new and, uh, original, especially with the Rex Buster upgrades, stuff like that. This guy, or girl, rather, has been pretty cool. Of course, the actual May doll, in and of itself, very awesome. The Core Gundam back there, go watch all of the freaking Core Gundam reviews. There are lots of them. And I do have it set up with the proper U-Raven, because that's what he was using at the time that they did the thing. So come back next review for that. <sighs> and I'll see you guys then. Got a lot of stuff coming up. Obviously, I've been playing catch-up since everything froze over. And I do have more things that I'm building and or have built. It'd be fun. It'd be very, very fun. But I'll see you guys next time. And remember, as always, to keep on building.